Well, good morning and happy Sunday here, August 9th. It's uh, Minister Tim here. It's wonderful to be here with you on this fine Sunday morning. And we're here at Great Bridge. And behind me, uh, in 1775 December, stood what was called Fort Murray. It was a British occupied fort. As you know, this was a British colony at the time. And uh, during that month, we had the Battle of Great Bridge, the battle over this territory, this uh, roadway between the Carolinas and Virginia. And so we're here today talking about a different sort of battle, a battle for the spirit and the soul. It's what we're here for on Sunday mornings, so I welcome you uh, this morning. And we've been talking about, over the last few weeks, a four-part series based on Paul's first letter to Timothy, chapter 6 and verse 12, where we talk about what it means to be a disciple of Jesus. And we looked at briefly in verse 11 where Paul says to Timothy, But thou, O man of God, and what we're going to see is a man or woman of God is a disciple of Jesus. And what does it mean to be a disciple of Jesus? Well, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12 tells us, Fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life, wherefore unto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. And from that verse, we're looking at four different things right here. We're looking at the call of God. And number one, we looked at a few weeks back, and then the professed a good profession. We looked at that also, I believe, two weeks ago. And uh, third thing is lay hold on eternal life and fight the good fight of faith. And we began our journey, of course, with the call of God. And why do we need God's call? And uh, we saw that from Psalm 14, verse 2 through 3, said, The Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did, understand, did, did understand and seek God. They are all gone aside. They are all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. See, God's call out to mankind to make himself known because none seek after God. That's the human condition. Mankind doesn't seek after God because man would rather be their own gods. And we saw this looking all the way back in the book of Genesis in the Garden of Eden where Satan tempts Eve first and uh, she talks about eating this fruit and you're going to be like God and she eats and gives to her husband also. And so what is the call of God? Well, we saw from Psalm 19 verse 1 through 3 says the heavens Declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day utter speech, and night after night showeth knowledge. There is no speech, nor language, where their voice is not heard. See, God's revealing of himself in mankind is manifest in his creation. The creation declares God's glory. And why do some not recognize God's call? We saw this in more detail. No fear of God before their eyes. Satan, or the God, small g, of this world has blinded their minds. People love darkness more than light. Because people love the things of this world, but don't love God who created the world. God's call goes out to mankind every single day, every day, everywhere in the world. So the first step of this life-changing Discipleship of Jesus begins with a response to God's call. The call of God points us to Him, God's magnificence, His glory, His greatness. The call says, He is God, we are not. The call says, I, God, am who I am, the creator and sustainer of all things. The call says, I, God, created you for my glory, and I have a plan and purpose for your life. God's call shows us He exists, and the way to Him comes through faith in Jesus Christ. This points us to the next step in being a disciple of Jesus, which we looked at last time we're together, is professing a good profession of faith. And what does it mean to profess a good profession of faith? And this has significant consequences for our lives. Our hope, our dreams, our future, our eternity depends upon the answer to this question. So it's crucial we get to the truth when speaking about a good profession of faith. And there's no place to find an answer to that question than what Jesus has to say about it. Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. 
In the end of Jesus' ministry, he gets arrested, stands trial before the Roman governor, governor Pontius Pilate. And they have this conversation in John's Gospel, chapter 18, verse 33. It says, Then Pilate entered his judgment hall again and called Jesus, said unto him, O thou king of the Jews. The ultimate question, Jesus' entire ministry is teaching, feeding, healing, raising people from the dead, comes down to this moment. All the questions peace people posed to Jesus, all the things people perceived and wondered, comes down to this moment and the biggest stage in front of the one who can release him or commit him to death. The ultimate question everyone wants to know, are thou king of the Jews? Jews have been waiting for this long and prophesied Messiah king, the one who would deliver Israel from oppression and foreign powers, the kingdom of Israel reestablished. Out thou, king of the Jews. In other words, out thou, the Messiah, the Holy One, anointed one of God. See, the prophet Isaiah spoke about the future Messiah 700 years before Jesus enters the scene. We find this in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5, he says, But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised by our iniquity, for our iniquities. Chastisement of peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Verse 11, He shall see the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied by his knowledge. Shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. And then we saw I... Isaiah wrote in chapter 42, verse 6, I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness, will hold thy hand, and I will keep thee, give thee for a covenant of the people, for a light to the Gentiles. And we see the writer in 1 Chronicles, writes this chapter 17, verse 14, says, I will settle him in mine house, and my kingdom forever, and his throne shall be established forevermore. And Psalmist writes, chapter 2, verse 6 through 7, Yet I have set my king upon my holy hill. I will declare the decree the Lord has said unto thee, Thou art out my son, this day have I begotten thee. See, the promised Messiah, God's righteous servant, will justify many. He shall bear our iniquities. He was wounded for our transgressions. By stripes we are healed. God the Father will give thee for a covenant to the people, Israel, and a light for the Gentiles. Chosen king, his kingdom will be forever. Out thou the Messiah king? Pilate and the world want to know. John's Gospel, chapter 18, verse 37 records, Pilate said unto him, Out there, out there our king? Jesus answered, Thou sayest I am a king. To, to this end I was born. For this cause I came into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of truth heareth my voice. So that's a good profession. Jesus is king, that's why he came into the world. He came as a king to establish his kingdom, to make a way for us to enter his glorious kingdom by faith in him. Messiah, who the scriptures foretold, he came to seek and save the lost, to save us, Jews and Gentiles, from our sinful ways. Forgiveness that comes through faith in him, the penalty of sin atoned for by his death on the cross, our new life in him, by the power of the resurrection of the Holy Spirit. What does it mean for us to profess a good profession of faith? Jesus is king. By faith we trust who he is. The scriptures say he is the king who has come to redeem us, to make us right with God, to bridge the gap between the great divide between us and God because of sin. We are now united with God through Jesus Christ, sin's debt paid in full. As king he leads the way and we follow the way each day. And as king, he is the kingdom. We enter by faith in him where there is forgiveness of sin. Jesus came to earth the first time to establish his kingdom. It's a spiritual kingdom. God's Holy Spirit placed inside those who come to faith in Jesus. That leads us to John's Gospel, chapter 3, verse 16. Scripture says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believeth in him should not perish, perish, but have everlasting life. See, the third step in being a disciple of Jesus, laying hold on eternal life. And there are some of us and some out there that will put all their emphasis on eternal life found in Jesus and pass right over this important understanding of Jesus, our King. 
There are others who rearrange the discipleship process and place eternal life ahead of Jesus our King. You see, the disciples asked Jesus this question. This is found in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 16, verse 13 through 17. It said, When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say, Thou art John the Baptist. Some, Elijah, others, Jeremiah, are one of the prophets. He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? What a question that is for all of us. Whom say ye that I am? Jesus asked that question. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said unto him, Bless art thou, Simon bar Jonah, for flesh and blood is not revealed it unto thee, my Father which is in heaven. Thou art the Christ, the anointed one, the Holy One of God. Thou art the Christ, the Messiah. See, Peter recognized who Jesus was, not what he was going to do on the cross. He, in effect, he was, when he heard about it, he was against it. You see, right after Peter declares Jesus as the Son of God, the living God, the Christ, Scripture records this, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 16, verse 21 through 23 says, from that time forth began Jesus show unto his disciples how he must go to Jerusalem, suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed and be raised again on the third day. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, that shall not be unto thee. But he turned, as Jesus turned to Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou sayest, not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. See, we must understand ourselves, as Peter must understand, that in order to be a disciple of Jesus, we need to understand that Jesus is the Messiah, the King. The King of the Jews, the King, the Gentiles. When we grasp this, we can understand what Jesus says to them next in verse 24. Then Jesus Dead sin, said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. Jesus messaged us, deny yourself. See, you and I cannot be our own kings. Jesus says, deny yourself. There is only one king, and that's Jesus. If Jesus is our king, we heed his call to follow him. Jesus is our king. Scripture also calls him our shepherd, where Jesus says, recorded in John's Gospel, chapter 10, verse 27 through 28, he says, My sheep hear my voice. I know them. They follow me. I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any pluck them out of my hand. If we follow him, he gives us eternal life. When we have faith in Jesus, he pardons us from our sins. He died on the cross to pay the penalty for the sin of us. He rose from the dead, and in him we are born again into a new life. See, there are some who want eternal life, but have no interest in Jesus as king. No interest in following him. They want what he gives, not who he is. But see, that's contrary to what the scriptures teach. That's why we must recognize Jesus as king, commit to following him, where he pardons us for our sins, and he gives eternal life. Romans 6, 22 through 23 says, But now being made free from sin and become servants of God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. See, I cannot be king of my own life and serve God. When I become a servant, I must serve the true king, Jesus. But what does it mean to be a disciple of Jesus? Responding to the call of God. Professing a good profession of faith in Jesus. Laying hold on eternal life. God's call has gone out to us Again today, my brethren, 
Do you hear it? Have you perceived it? Have you responded to it? If you've said yes to God's call, the pathway to know Him and be reconciled to Him comes through Jesus. Coming into Jesus means professing a good profession of faith. Jesus is our King. Not just any King, my King, your King. By faith in who He is means we perceive what He has done on the cross by paying the penalty for our sin. Forgiveness of sin that gives us access to His kingdom where the Spirit of God is poured out on us. Right now, His kingdom is a spiritual kingdom, someday a physical kingdom, when Jesus comes to reign again and we will spend eternity with God. Well, next week we'll complete our discipleship journey by looking at what it means to fight the good fight of faith. Until that time, my brethren, may the God of peace be with you all. And as his call goes out, as you experience all his creation, may you respond to him today. Do not harden your hearts. Do not worship the creation. Worship the creator. Amen. Well, God bless you, and we'll see you again next Sunday.